State House Museum Collections podcast. The Old State House is located in Little Rock, Arkansas, and it's been operating as a museum since 1949. We have a really large collection, and unfortunately, we're not able to have everything on exhibit all the time. We felt it was important to start choosing an artifact uh, once a month and discussing it, introducing it to the public. In an effort to make our, our collection accessible, really. Yes. Um, that, that's really what this podcast is all about, making our collection as accessible as possible. For this first podcast, the artifact we've chosen is the building itself, because the building is as much an artifact as it is a museum. And how we've decided to look at the building is through the medical school's use of the old state house between 1911 and 1935. And with the construction of the new state capitol, the present day state capitol, uh, all the government offices and all the elected officials moved all their stuff out, leaving the old state house vacant. And in 1911, after several groups jockeyed to have control of the the old state house, the medical school took over the building. In 2001, the museum put on an exhibit about the medical school at the old state house. The curator for that exhibit was Dr. Jonathan Wolf from UAMS, and in order to learn more about the medical school at the old state house, we made the trip over to UAMS to talk to Dr. Wolf. The following audio is a result of that interview. The, there were two medical colleges in Arkansas, both located in Little Rock. There was a private school, uh, the Physicians and Surgeons Medical College. Then there was a second medical school, which was technically the medical department of the Arkansas Industrial University. Uh, although it was part of the University of Arkansas and is d- the direct ancestor of the current College of Medicine here at the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences, it received no funding from the state of Arkansas. So both the the physicians and surgeons and the uh, university medical school taught the same curriculum, taught it in the same pattern. And it was, uh, the two schools were roughly comparable, but uh, neither one of them was in good financial condition. Abraham Flexner, who was not himself a physician, visited Arkansas under the auspices of the Carnegie Foundation in 1909, and he uh, went to the campuses of both the then colleges in the city and reviewed how they were teaching, their curriculum, their support, and so forth, and he came to the conclusion that both, both of the medical schools in the city were totally inadequate, and both of them should be closed. They were a waste of resources. His report was actually published in 1910. And the result here in Arkansas was that the faculties of the two medical colleges determined that if they merged their programs into a single medical school, that they then uh, considered that they could bring up enough uh, educational resources and enough access to patients in, in local hospitals to meet the requirements for an accredited medical school, and this this is indeed what they did. Morgan Smith, who was a physician who was on the faculty of the medical college and was associated with John D. Rockefeller, he had worked in the, the public health projects that the Rockefeller Foundation had in process at that time. Smith was concerned about the health of Arkansans if there were no medical school at all. So he promoted the merger. He was also concerned about further accreditation. And at that time, all the medical teaching was con- conducted down on Sherman Street at the second site of the medical school after it left. The completion of the current state capitol building meant that all of the agencies in the state of Arkansas that were housed there, all the constitutional officers particularly, moved to offices in the new state capitol. So this includes the governor, uh, the secretary of state, the treasurer, land commissioner, and so forth. 
So here's the old state house building sitting vacant, a lot of square feet. It was reasonably close to the clinics of the city hospital and uh, students and faculty could conveniently walk back and forth between the two. So Smith almost, uh, I guess we could say, occupied the old state house without having complete permission to do it. He was sort of an urban squatter for educational purposes. Uh, Smith occupied the place initially because he needed a space for a public health chemical laboratory to analyze samples sent in, sent in from around the state. And so if you look at the photograph that shows the two children sitting out in front of the state capitol, yeah, look at that photo. side. Yeah. It is a great one of my favorite photos. And it says it's the home of the University of Arkansas Medical School, Pharmacy School, and Public Health Laboratories. Uh, Smith got that sign painted very quickly uh, so that he could have, have a, a, a cert title at least to the building. After that, it was simply a matter over the summer before medical school started of getting in, uh, partitioning off some of the space, such as the uh, the house chamber on the second floor of, of the old state house, so that it could have the different laboratories. Uh, they had to install a pathology burner, a high temperature furnace. They also fitted up the basement of the old state capitol and some of the outside yard with little wire cages so they could have experimental animals in there. Right. And uh, the room, as you come in the front doors on the right, uh, opposite the bookstore that has rotating exhibits in it, was uh, was the dean's office. The lecture and then they would leave. And there was a library, a small uh, medical library fitted up in the place. So it was done in a matter of months and on a very small budget. But uh, it worked, and through 1935, from 1911 uh, 12 until 1935, that was where the first two years of the curriculum were taught. You combine, you know, young students, many of them teenagers, and alcohol, and being in the big city, and all kinds of all kinds of things. I'm certain occurred. <laughs> One of my favorites was was told me by. Uh, Gilbert Dean, a physician here, Gilbert Dean Sr., who died just a year or so ago. And Dr. Dean's family were from here in Little Rock. He said every day when he was a medical student, he'd get on the trolley car to go home. And sometimes he'd go home at, at lunchtime and have a meal and come back. And he said they, he would get on the trolley car and happen to all of his friends when they'd go on the trolley cars. They'd be coming from the laboratories and they'd be reeking of formaldehyde and other odors. And people on the bus would all move away from them, sort of like Arlo Guthrie on the Section 8 bench in Alice's Restaurant, I guess. But people, they'd get on the bus and people would move away or they'd indicate, you know, you need to sit where the wind will, in the back where the wind will draft that smell out of the, out of the trolley. He, he remarked, he uh, got on the bus one time and saw the, uh, the trolley and saw this very attractive young lady and uh, tried to strike up a conversation with her and she just sort of held her nose, ooh, you're one of those stinky medical students. <laughs> that was the end of that. The, uh, the students at that time had to prepare their own bodies for, for use in the gross anatomy lab. And there was a, a tank in the basement, now gone in the remodelings of the building. But uh, unclaimed bodies of, of, uh, of poor people, bodies of unidentified people, were placed in these tanks. And the medical students then would go down and lift off the cover and select their cadaver and had to carry the cadaver up the steps and get into the anatomy lab and set yeah. things up. Uh, there were stories of people who, when they were taken down, the lid taken off the cadaver tank, they that was their point at which they resigned from medical school. <laughs> they <laughs> didn't want to get their hands into that. They were, of course, right next door to the hotel, and they would occasionally call over and order Cokes, Coca-Colas, uh, from the restaurant there in the hotel and one of the bellmen would come over from the hotel with a tray and six or eight cokes whatever on it and they would uh, tell the person to bring those cokes to a particular room and of course it was the one on the east end of the building on the second floor that was the gross anatomy laboratory <laughs> and they would uh, medical students would get this person upstairs and say oh just come on in this room we're in here and he'd open the door and see all the cadavers and people working away and <laughs> drop down the tray of Cokes and 
run from the building. <laughs> I think it is important to look at the old state house itself as an artifact. Uh, its construction, the different modifications that it's had over the years, uh, it is remarkable that it survived still able to serve a, a public purpose. And uh, say, I am convinced that the, the faculty and students who used it, inhabited it for their 25 or so years, could indeed say it's uh, to some extent their own memorial. We'd like to send a special thanks to Dr. Jonathan Wolf from UMS for taking the time out to sit down and talk with us. Uh, this podcast can be found at iTunes or on our blog at OSHMCollections.com. The Old State House Museum is a museum of the Department of Arkansas Heritage, and this podcast and the collections are funded in part by the Natural and Cultural Resources Council. Thank you for watching.